everyone. You're welcome to this week's Tech Tuesday's webinar on MDM multi-domain, the many ways to consume master data. I'm Brinda and I'll be hosting today's webinar. Today's session is conducted by Jyoti Venkateshan, an Informatica veteran who has hands-on experience with various Informatica products for the past 20 years in North America across different industries. She's currently working as a principal customer success technologist, focusing on MDM customers to have a successful MDM journey. She's also the chairperson of the Houston Informatica user group. Before we start this webinar, here are some housekeeping tips. All dial-in participants will be muted so that the presenter will be able to present without any kind of interruptions. The webinar is for one hour. That includes a 45 minutes webcast, and then we'll move over to live to answer your questions. Please post your questions in the Q&A box and we'll try and answer, answer them. Also, please put your feedbacks for this webinar for the upcoming topics for the Tech Tuesdays. The Tech Tuesday webinars is a webinar series introduced within the Success Portal. The Informatica Success Portal is a microlearning platform that offers free and unlimited learning to all registered users. The Success Portal lists your success offerings, your customer success manager information, bookings available in the Ask an Expert session, and customized recommendation and content. Here are some important links that will help you in your product adoption journey. Over to you, Jyoti. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Hello everyone. Here is the agenda for today's webinar. We will cover an overview on why this topic is critical. What does Informatica recommend? Different Informatica products and solutions. Technical perspective on the options available for batch, real time and UI. Followed by a demo of a sample web UI that shows interaction with BES and then we will conclude the webinar with Q&A. Here is the list of intended audience for this webinar. You could be a MDM sponsor or business or technical user of MDM. You could have just started your MDM journey or you could be an experienced MDM user. We came up with this topic so that all MDM users are aware of the various options that are available to them so that they can have a successful journey. Now let's start with the overview. Let's begin with a set of questions which can help you think through your journey. How are we measuring the current quality of data across our enterprise? How has my MDM project helped me improve the quality of data? What are my returns because of improved data quality? How are we governing or managing our enterprise-wide data? What does great data look like for our business strategy? Are we enriching our data to get better business decisions and recommendations? Are we protecting and using our data to comply with privacy regulations? Do we understand our customers' preferences and concerns? How are we measuring risk? Who in our organization may be able to solve our data challenges? Are you able to answer these questions easily? If not, you would benefit from this webinar. This is one slide that probably does not need much explanation because we all deal with this all the time. The perspective between business and IT can vary, but we want to achieve the sweet balance that ensures success to our organization. The gap between business and IT could be because we do not speak the same language or the process could be different. Whatever it may be, it is critical to have that executive sponsorship to bridge the gap that exists. Depending on the organization, it could be bridged with the right people or process or technology. End of the day, ID serves business and hence it is very critical 
that we gain the trust from business by demonstrating tangible business value as we progress through the MDM journey. This slide explains how master data evolves to master the context for business. This is how we see the MDM leaders are going. They are moving from single domain to connecting all 360s across various domains for a full business perspective. Mastering data is creating trusted core critical data, while mastering context is about getting the rounded view by linking all data with mastered data. So linking data as it becomes available and then aligning the data with the trusted single view helps provide data's value to your business functions. This helps us gain the confidence of business users as they see value in your MDM journey. Start with a single domain and expand to a multi-domain platform. As you progress, build a 360 for a single domain, graduating to 360 for multiple domains. This will help you arrive at Business 360 where you are able to master the context for business. For example, Informatica Customer 360 provides clean, consistent, and connected information about customers. Businesses use the master customer data to make better business decisions about customers, manage customer relationships, and get a single trusted view of a customer. The user interface displays an enterprise level dashboard as well as 360 degree customer views that are customized for different business users. So with Customer 360, business users can streamline the customer onboarding and qualification process, centralize the data about customers in a master database, view the relationships between customers, parent companies, subsidiaries, and related organizations, design campaigns based on customer preferences and behavior, improve customer service, connect customer data to the product catalogs and view the buying patterns, view customer to product relationships. Similarly, any MDM solution you build must master the data and create a context around it for the business. In a typical MDM journey, we ingest the data from various systems and then we master the data by creating a single trusted source of truth. At the MDM layer, build the process to manage or govern the master data. Begin with a single domain and then expand to multiple domains. Master the context by connecting all the data to get a 360 view of the entity. Enrich 360 with analytic insights, calculations, and predictions. Based on what we have seen so far, here are the key challenges that we could face in master data journey. Product or solution fitment could be misaligned if team does not know what to expect or there is no roadmap or initiative outline or there is no business input and involvement. Poorly defined scope is another challenge that could result in major customization during implementation and operation. Hence, the program could result in flawed or delayed business outcome. Next challenge is boiling the ocean, where we try to achieve everything in the initial phase. There is lack of technical expertise and incorrect focus, and this can result in loss of business confidence. Lack of data governance delays user adoption and increases time to market. This also can be a huge hindrance for collaboration across the enterprise. Now that we saw the key challenges, let's move on to the recommended approach. MDM is foundational to digital transformation. Why? 
because strategic initiatives rely heavily on a 360 degree single version of truth. MBM solution helps you realize rapid success. Build it right the first time because modifying 360 model is expensive. How? Begin with manageable data sources containing reliable data. Focus on high benefit, low effort use cases for a single domain first. Build business centric initial solution to support go to market strategy. Here are the best practices and engagement recommendations. Establish a formal data governance organization so that your data is managed across the enterprise. As you move from one phase to the next, keep checking and communicating the benefits. Adopt a phased approach and make MDM a program. To begin with, focus on the low effort, high impact changes that will help you reach the bus final business goal. Avoid scope creep into a specific phase in the program. Ensure continuous collaboration between IT and business. Get the support you need from your vendor. Get inside into upcoming features that can help you achieve your business goals faster. Ensure consistent architecture across your enterprise. Now, Let's look at the approach to a 360 journey. Build a vision. Based on business plan and strategies, you can build a vision, and this helps with assessment of business willingness to change and collaborate. Create plan and actionable roadmap. Assess existing capabilities and gaps. Define roadmap based on business priorities and dependencies. <laughs> Choose the right product and solution. Correct 360 product and solution can help in achieving business goals faster. This is the key step to accelerate business outcomes. Build foundation. Showcase product capabilities so that business understands the value faster. Align 360 vision to tangible business benefits. Adopt and expand. Expand on top of foundation based on importance. Focus on business adoption through enablement. Regarding initiative planning and strategy, perform current state assessment and gap analysis. Brainstorm effort versus benefit analysis for faster ROI. Based on feasibilities, technical dependencies, plan 360 journey initiatives, build a business case for MDM with measurable benefits, and then actually measure whether you're, you have achieved those benefits, and continue measuring and sharing that information widely across the business. Here is Informatica Velocity Guideline for implementation, which you might find helpful as you progress through your journey. Use this as a guideline and implement as applicable at your end. I want to draw your attention to the data quality audit and the milestone charts as you progress through the journey. Rest of the activities at the different phases of your journey must be quite familiar to everyone. Let's proceed to look at the various products and solutions that Informatica has to offer. This slide indicates that Informatica is uniquely capable of helping organizations get an end-to-end -end business 360. We are the only vendor to provide market-leading enterprise class master data capabilities for all domains and use cases. We provide pre-built 360 solutions like Customer 360 and Supplier 360 for faster development and deployment. We can help provide reference data as a self-service to your business users through Reference 360.
then we are the only vendor utilizing AI to automate and scale data management activities, which increases productivity while lowering costs. Here are the different Informatica solutions to support top industry use cases. If you start with Customer 360 or Supplier 360, then the UI is pre-configured and it reduces your development effort than if you were to build them from scratch. Like we already saw, Customer 360 provides clean, consistent, and connected information about customers. This helps business make better business decisions about customers and manage customer relationships. Supplier 360 provides self-service capability through the supplier portal, manage relationships, understand performance and compliance with internal and external requirements. It puts the onboarding of suppliers in the hands of suppliers. Reference 360 offers self-service of reference data for business users. It allows business users to manage reference data and standardize information with versioning and export capabilities. It offers complete lifecycle management, including import, hierarchy, versioning, mapping, and export of reference data. And with regard to infrastructure, Info also offers hosted MDM option for those that are considering migration to cloud. If you are into data governance journey, you can look into Axon and EDC products, which offer various features such as glossary, data dictionary, system and data lineage, process lineage, data quality, stakeholder assignment, workflows, etc. If you would like to learn more about any of these specific products or options, please do browse through the other Tech Tuesday webinars that are available at our success portal or reach out to your respective account managers and they should be able to guide you through the next steps. Here is a sample 360 architecture. Let's say these are your data sources, which could range from relational to message queues to unstructured data. You ingest the data from different data sources using IACS. Data is prepared at DQ, where you must profile the source data. It is important to understand the quality of data that you're getting from your sources so that you can determine which source system you can trust. At this stage, you could certainly look into two options. One would be to correct the bad data that has already come in, and the next would be to prevent bad data from even coming in. At this stage, you transform, aggregate, and enhance the data, which is an iterative process. Then master the data at MDM. This is where you establish the trusted source, match and merge the data across systems, establish the single version of truth, and master a single domain and move on to master multiple domains. Connect the mastered multi-domain data to the rest of the data to create a 360 view to set a business context. And one way to implement MDM is to take all the data from your source systems in batch, move them into MDM, clean and consolidate MDM data, and then send the clean and consolidated data back to your source systems to clean their data and remove their duplicates. Depending on how often you run those batch processes, it could uh, take hours um, but now the batch processing might make sense for some systems, but it might not for the others uh, because they could be critical business systems and it could slow down the onboarding of new customers or products and it could introduce lag into your business process. The cost of doing all your master data processing in batch is time and time means money. However, Informatica MDM does not require you to do all your master data management in batches. We also provide automatically created APIs 
that you can uh, use in order to easily integrate with your most critical business systems in real time or near real time. That way you eliminate the weight and you also can enrich the amount of data available to your business users by augmenting the data they captured with the full data available in MDM. We will go through in detail the various options available to expose the master data through APIs or UI. And then you will publish the master data to the consumers through executive dashboards, reports, data warehouse, etc. Throughout the journey, there should be an established data governance process in the organization. Now, let's look into MDM from a technical perspective. This slide indicates sample inbound feed where we reconcile the data at MDM and once mastered at MDM, we distribute the data to outbound feeds from MDM. MDM can be bidirectional where you feed the master data back to the source system that is reconciled. Now let's get into the many ways to consume master data. I know it's a lot of information, but the intent is for our MDM users to be aware of their available options. Few more points on MDM outbound. You read from the MDM publish area and then send the data to consuming systems. Keep track of the systems that are integrated with MDM, both current and future state. Build executive dashboards to expose the data quality trend for different domains and how MDM has helped improve the data quality in order to showcase the value. Prevent bad data from entering at the source systems. MDM query and packages can be used to join base objects. You will see the package as a viewer database. From there, master data can be distributed to consuming systems. Another option would be message queues, where you can generate XML messages for data changes in the hub. Publish the messages to JMS message queues. Other external systems or applications that listen on the MQ can retrieve the message and process it accordingly. The various events that can trigger a message is given in the screenshot from hub and it could be add, update, delete, etc. And you can also configure to trigger a message for changes in any specific column. Another option would be services integration framework or the CIV, where hub interfaces with external programs and applications. CIV facilitates both inbound and outbound integration. CIV provides APIs for various MDM hub services, such as reading, cleansing, matching, inserting, and updating records. Now regarding the user interface, if some of you are still at IDD, you would need to graduate to NDD 360. You will see the differences between the UIs in the table that you see in the screen. So NDD 360 is uh, data, the data is organized around business entities. Whereas at IDD, data is organized around subject areas and aggregated to subject area groups. At E360, the configuration of application is done through the provisioning tool. At IDD, you, you would have used the configuration manager. And E360 can have unlimited depth of descendant records, whereas IDD restricted you until the grandchild level. And at uh, E360, you can merge children records at the same descendant level, whereas at IDD, that was not possible. And at E360, you can easily create layouts containing standard and custom components. At IDD, layouts are not easily configurable. 
And at E360, you can hide the complexity of MDM hub table structure from the end users through the business entity services. But at IDD, the end user had to be aware of the underlying table structure. So the E360 framework uses business entity models to support customizable record view layouts. A business entity represents an entity with significance to an organization, such as customers, products, accounts, or locations. You create business entity models based on the schema information that you defined at the ORS. A business entity model is similar to a subject area in an Informatica IDD application. And you use the multi-domain MDM provisioning tool to configure business entities, business entity views, transformations, etc. Here are the key features of Entity 360. It offers integrated business entity services. It is configurable UI. It offers unlimited nesting of descendant records. With business entities, you can merge child records that are at the same descendant level. It offers both simplified and enhanced data search. As you can see, a lot of customization can be done at E360 UI and external com components can also be configured. You have the smart search modules to provide additional information. You have the primary block view that can expand to show the child children blocks and you have in-page navigations through pills to scroll to the specific entity, etc. Now that we have seen the E360 UI, let's get into business entity services. Many of you must be familiar with base objects at ORS. Logical view of the base objects that reflects the real world entities is the business entity. For example, the customer business entity represents all the data you know about your customers, including their names, addresses, contact details, and so on. When you model a business entity in MDM, MDM automatically generates the business entity services for that business entity. IDD uses those services for the E360 UI pages. And you can also use them in your own custom user interfaces or to directly provide MDM data in other applications. Here are the advantages of business entity services. At BES, changes in model are reflected automatically. It's always in sync with the model. UI, services, and database are all tied together. And according to our product roadmap, E360 and business entity services are the building blocks for MDM UIs of the future. And when compared to CIF, BES is easier to develop against because you do not need to know the underlying table details. If using CIF APIs, you need to know the underlying relational data model for customer address, etc. SIF APIs require many calls, parent through children, to complete a transaction, whereas BES APIs include the parent through children in a single structure with a single API to complete a transaction. Here is the screenshot that shows business entity service APIs that are available after I generated the business entities. You will notice that both Vardal and Visual files are available. Just follow the format localhost colon port and you should be able to see this at your end too after generating business entity services. And if you need further details on BES or Entity 360, please do watch the other webinars, webinar links that I have given here. You will also find more webinars related to specific MDM products and features at our success portal. With that, let's move on to the demo.
And uh, in this demo, I will walk you through a sample web UI that shows how we interact with BES. This is our own made up company in Forma, just for our demo purposes. So here in the screen, uh, you will see that we can search on organization or people or products. Let's start with people. <clears throat> I'm going to search for John. And uh, you see the, I want to draw your attention to the MDM REST call log that you have here. And you see the get calls that are made to MDM. And then it throws us the results here. And uh, if you click on include pending records, it's going to include the pending records. And if you want to filter for any type of, uh, you know, any type, any specific data, you can go ahead and do so. And uh, now let's come back to John. And I, I want to look at the specific details of, let's say, John Jones. I'm going to click on this name and you see the quick ID card view for John Jones and you see the call that was made here and let's go ahead and click on the full details. Here I'm able to see the complete detail for John and at they know every you know, at every uh, at the 360 view, I could just go ahead and click on uh, different uh, circles here. So it uh, tells me more about John. So his email, his postal address, his financials, his social handle, and the professional details. He's a sales consultant. So pretty much whatever I need to know about John, I am able to get a 360 view of John Jones here. Similarly, uh, we could do for organizations. So let's go to the organization and uh, I'm going to search for my company Informatica and then I say search. So you see the records that are available and then Go ahead and open the record and this is the quick view of the company. And then I go ahead and click at full details. Again, a 360 view of the company. And uh, you see no value because we have not populated a uh, complete value with the sample data for just demo purposes. But I believe this gets the message across on the get calls that are made to underlying MDM. And you will see the postal address. And uh, let's go ahead and look at our key executives. So you see the data that are available here. And then you see the phone number. So it gives you a 360 view of the organization. And of course, uh, the more uh, data you populate, the better information you're going to have. And now let's go ahead to the data services. And let's, let's try the address verification. Uh, I want to check an incomplete address and see if it's able to validate it. Again, this is the address of my company and uh, I have not given the complete postal address. I'm just giving an incomplete address to see if it is able to validate the address. So I'm going to click on verify. And here I see that 2000 Seaport became 2000 Seaport Boulevard and Redwood became Redwood City. And I did not give a zip and I see the postal code here. Along with the latitude and longitude because of which it is able to pin it to a map and show me the details in a map also. And here is the rest call that was made. So um, that pretty much bring, brings us to the end of the demo. And uh, now let's go back to our presentation.
So to conclude, MDM is a program rather than a project. Early planning and roadmap definition is the key. Choose the right Informatica products based on your roadmap and business priority. Sketch the big picture, but concentrate on short-term gain using foundation deployment approach for early wins. Showcase the solution capabilities. Expand with realistic goals and periodic checkpoint reviews to align and improvise. Always consider the total costs, not just the product license. Take into account the hardware, the implementation, user training, operation costs, everything related to data governance, maintenance, and potential delay costs. Everything's pre ensure you include everything in your uh, cost. Expose the master data to business consumers. Enable the business owners to, to access your master data and to be able to put it into context for business. Demonstrate tangible business value to monetize the 360 solutions. Identify metrics to measure before, during, and after the implementation. Build a business case for MDM with measurable benefits. Actually measure whether you have achieved those benefits. Continue measuring and sharing the information widely across the organization. Have a successful 360 or MDM journey. I really hope you found this webinar helpful. And please do reach out to your respective account managers if you need any further information on what was presented. With that, we can move on to Q&A. Hi everyone, we are open for live Q&A. Please post your questions in the Q&A box and Jodi will answer your questions. Um, hello everyone, so I do see uh, from Bao, uh, what is involved in migrating from IDD, IDD to NED360? A very good question. I know uh, quite a few of our customers are still at IDD, uh, but like I mentioned, it's time to move on to NED360. And there are, there is actually, if you had noticed, there is like a generate any business entity services button that you click on and it generates the already existing, uh, it converts the already existing subject area into business entities for you. But having said that, there are a bunch of FAQs um, that go with the migration aspect. And um, like, for example, if you have special characters such as underscore, um, so, you know, there, there are a few things that we need to be aware of. Uh, and, uh, you know, we will have to probably give you further details on uh, the different steps that are involved. But then if you are just going to click on the button, yes, it's going to generate the business entity services for you. And uh, there is also a dedicated uh, Tech Tuesday webinar on this particular topic, uh, which I had posted in uh, uh, one of my slides. So definitely you would also find that very helpful. And um, you know, there, there are a few steps that you need to take care of, but it's actually pretty simple as long as you're aware of uh, how you need to go about doing it. Uh, but yeah, it, you will definitely feel that uh, the UI is much richer when you use NAD360. So uh, definitely please do get in touch with us if you need any help uh, doing the migration. And uh, so the next question I have uh, is, uh, from uh, Jimmy, where he's saying, when data is merged, can we trigger to write back to mash data application? Yes, absolutely. So uh, in this case, you could, use, you could uh, look through the message queue triggers where uh, the triggers can be used to write the mash data back to the application. Um, and uh, there are a bunch of few more questions. I am trying to catch up on them. Um, yeah, let, let me just go ahead and uh, make my laptop. Uh, so I, I do see that uh, there's one other um, question from Christopher where he's saying, why aggregate the data uh, during the data preparation? You may lose the duplicates. Uh, yes, uh, this really depends on the use case. Um, so source system may have duplicates that uh, you may want to eliminate. And uh, 
uh, if the requirement, if you know, like you know, like Dilip mentioned, if the requirement needs to retain the duplicates, then uh, you could use a different de design. Uh, we could talk through it, but yeah, it really depends on the use case, uh, on uh, whether you want to use aggregate or not. Uh, and then uh, I do see a bunch of uh, few more questions. Uh, and uh, someone, uh, Ando Shea has asked if address validation shown in the demo as data services is included in multi-domain address validation service uh, it, that needs to be purchased uh, separately from what I understand. Uh, I believe it's sold separately as a service, but you can definitely get in touch with your uh, respective account manager and uh, they would be able to let you know how it works for your particular uh, Informatica platform. Uh, uh, but from what I recall, it should be purchased separately as a license. Um, so this one, the next one I see, we have noticed MDM uh, in reporting capability, so it will be more user friendly for non-technical business users uh, for example, report to get all merge records, summary report with number of merge, unmerge, et cetera. Um, so Indira, yes, that's a good point. I uh, believe um, we do have this one uh, addressed in some of our, uh, some of our uh, IACS capabilities that we can definitely walk you through how we could probably uh, help you with your reporting capability on uh, uh, how many, how much data was merged, and how which user merged it, and uh, definitely this can be built out. Um, please do uh, get in touch with us if you need help around that area, and we will be able to walk you through that. And uh, the next one uh, is it true in new version of MDM have featured to generate merge rule based on machine learning? Yes, this is going to be the way we are moving forward. And uh, Jimmy, you are already ahead. Uh, you're, you're, you appear to be quite well informed. Um, yes, that that is how we are uh, trying to move forward. Uh, but uh, definitely more around that will come to you uh, from our PMs. You know, some of our future releases. And uh, the next one um, I see from Gopinath. Is saying how do we cascade MDM data to down to downstream? Is there a different way to push the data from MDM Hub? So, um, like I mentioned during the presentation, Gopinath, uh, there are a bunch of ways you want to cascade the data downstream, right? Uh, depending on whether you want it to be real time, near real time, or batch. Uh, like, say, for example. Uh, you want to go near real time, then you would use message queues probably. But uh, if you want to push it immediately real time, then you you might want to definitely look at the business entity services that I was talking through. Um, that way, you are uh, ensuring that, like, say for example, your use cases, you want to search for a specific data before you create the data, like say at Salesforce then you want to go and check whether the customer exists already or not. So in such cases, you will automatically uh, look for a real-time approach where you will start using the business energy services. So uh, please do reach out to us in case you want any help with your specific use case, and we can draw it out for you and uh, um, make it work for you. But yeah, there, there are different options. Uh, really depends on your specific use case. but. Uh, uh, depending on the question, I'm guessing you're asking more about real time. But uh, for real time or near real time, definitely uh, you may want to look through the business and services option. Uh, it might come in handy for you. And uh, I believe this was already answered. Um, I see a hello, hello, okay. Um, and then I see from Gopinath, is there a different way to push the data from MDM? Yes, there, there, there are quite a few ways, uh, like I covered in my presentation. Um, so it could be business entity services, or it could be uh, event messages, or it could be packages. It could be just a join of different base objects. So um, there, there are various ways, ways to push the data downstream from MDM. I hope. Uh, Okay, and then there is this one good question um, where uh, there is one from Raju where he's saying, is Activa software required with MDM? Um, so 
it's actually installed as part of your MDM install, uh, Rajiv, uh, but uh, like say, for example, typically uh, you use that for your workflow and task workflows, you want to handle task workflows and you like say, for example, you your one of your business users uh, is actually uh, updating the data or merging the data and you want to ensure uh, that particular business user did the right thing and then you want that particular update to be approved by that business user's manager, then you definitely want to use the Activos uh, where the manager actually goes ahead and then approves whether the change done by the business user was incorrect or not. So that is when you have to actually use the Activos workflow. And uh, the next one I have is The next one I have is from Veer Dwaj Singh, where he's saying Jasper reports are no longer supported. How do we replace existing Jasper reports and to which recommended support platforms? Yeah, so for in, any such specific questions, uh, Veer Dwaj, I, I would have to you know direct you to your uh, respective uh, support manager, or you could just raise a case with the GCS because in, any time uh, where there are such uh, such deprecation. Typically, the support team has a preferred way that you follow. Um, so I would like you to get that uh, from your respective uh, support case, so that you are directed in the you are directed correctly, rather than me giving you a suggestion uh, top of my head right now. Because any such deprecation, um, we actually have a recommended path that we advise our uh, customers to follow. And uh, all right, there is one other question from Asit Shah where he is asking what software we need to add to our power setter to implement MDM. Um, good question, Asit. So uh, you, if you already have power center, um, definitely for the to implement master data management, there is a separate license that you will have to buy uh, where you actually go and talk to your account manager and then buy the license and then ensure uh, the Informatica platform is set up correctly for you. Um, so definitely please do let us know your use case and your account, if you contact your account manager, he will be in touch with us and uh, we will be able to validate your business requirement and use case and we will be able to let you know whether the product matches your use case and then whether what are all the different licenses that we recommend you to go with. And then we can start the conversation around uh, how it uh, helps you with your particular business use case. So please uh, do definitely uh, talk to your account manager so that uh, they can help you with your next steps. And uh, let me see if uh, there's any other question that uh, I know there was a whole dump of questions here and I'm trying to pick them up and answer and I hope I caught them all. Um, there is one question from Rob asking if there is there any plan to integrate chatbot kind of functionality in customer 360 or IDD application in the near future. I know this was being talked about, uh, but uh, I would wait on the official notification from the PMs uh, to understand what their plan is. Uh, but uh, yes, Rob, uh, this was definitely this was uh, being discussed, uh, but uh, I would not know the exact plan on uh, when it will go live. So I would wait on our uh, product management team uh, to come up with the official notification uh, whenever it happens. I believe um, this Jasper reports was already answered. Um, and there is one other from Gopinath where he's saying we're using MQ and batch today and using BS for real-time calls to MDM, but MQ figures is batch is getting costlier for us. So need to know other ways from BES to expose data through external calls. Oh, okay, Gopinath. So now I understand. Uh, yeah, okay. 
So if you are already using um, BES for real-time calls to MDM and uh, you are using MP event trigger and batch, um, definitely go pin up. We can look through your specific use case if it is probably getting costly for you. I, I'm not sure what um, that means, uh, costly as in uh, it's taking longer, to, longer time to process or uh, you know what the specifics are, uh, but definitely go pin us. Uh, do um, drop me a note. You have my email ID in the downloadable deck. Uh, please do drop me a note with uh, your specific use case and the details, and uh, definitely we can uh, review uh, what would be the best option for your company. Okay. Um, is there anything else that has not been answered? address validation piece was already answered. Um, please do let us know if there are any other questions which have not been answered. So I believe uh, all the questions that were given in the Q&A panel I have answered all of them by now. Um, if there's anything else pending, uh, please do let us know. I think we can uh, wait for some more time and uh, take up any other questions anyone may have. Okay, Gopinath is asking, where do I get your email? Uh, if you actually go into the TT webinar section, there is a, there's a part where it lets you download the PDF uh, Gopinath, uh, PDF of the slides. So you could download that, and that I believe it would be the last slide uh, where it would have my uh, email ID. It is jvenkatesan at informatica.com. Uh, but yeah, it will also be there in the PDF of the slides that you are able to download. All right, I uh, believe uh, that, are there any other questions uh, from anyone? Please go ahead and type them away. Uh, there is one question from Asit uh, Jyoti. Uh, yes, is there a I demo download available? Yeah, now I see that one question from Asit. Uh, he is asking, yeah. is there a demo download available for preparing for PPR, PPER management? I'm sorry, Asit, uh, do you mind uh, typing that again? I'm not sure uh, what that means. I think uh, Asit, we answered Asit's follow-up question, Brenda, where he asked for softwares that need to be added for on uh, top of Power Center to implement MDM. I believe I answered that. Um, so if he needs any okay. demo, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure what is PPE or maybe there is a typo in the question. Um, yeah. So. If you need a demo, definitely Asit, uh, do reach out uh, to your account manager and they will be able to arrange a demo for you um, so that uh, it will guide you through the in the right direction for uh, your specific use case. Uh, but I understand you are at Power Center right now and uh, maybe you, you may want to look at your options for your specific use case. Uh, but yeah, you you could definitely reach out to your account manager, and he will be able to uh, share what he is able to. 
And then uh, if there is a need for him to pull me in, he would pull me in. But you could definitely reach out to him and uh, uh, keep me copied if you like. I believe uh, that pretty much all. Um, it's 10.55 now. Uh, so that brings us to the end of the QA. Thank you all for joining us today. And uh, please do let me know in the feedback form if there is any specific topic that you would like me to cover in future. Um, stay safe and uh, meet you all at the next webinar with exciting topics. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you.